was going to be doing for the, most of the summer. And then he told me to be on my way to my location, which was in Norton, Oklahoma, which is our farthest northeast location. Um, when I arrived in Norton, the branch manager didn't even know I was going to be there that day. He, he was expecting me, but not right then and there. And in this next slide, you'll see he's very happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hug, not a choke, by the way. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the relationship that we had there at my elevator. This is the territory that we covered. All those towns listed over here, you might not be able to see them under this thing. Uh, you see down here, Salt Fork and Gibbon, they are just seasonal locations. They aren't open all year round, just during wheat harvest and during uh, fall crop harvest. Enid is a, it's just a gas station and a kind of a country store. They call it the Enid Country Store. It's just so that we can get non-member business there in Enid, so they can uh, purchase fuel and uh, they sell a lot of like horse feed and dog food and all that kind of stuff, show, show food. This is our territory. We go into Alfalfa County, Garfield County, Noble County, K and Grant. Uh, it might even be bigger than that. I've, I've heard of our spray rigs going a really long way just to spray somebody's field just because they know that we'll get it done and get there uh, pretty fast. Where that star is, that's in Arden, Oklahoma. That's where I was placed this summer. And that's kind of the same area where I'm from, so it was very convenient for me. And I think the manager did that on purpose, so I, I really appreciated that. Uh, Gibbon, which is seasonal, is our farthest northwest uh, location. And Waukegan is right next to that. Narden is our farthest northeast location. Um, I believe Hillsdale is our farthest southwest. And let's see, I think Lamont is our farthest southeast. That just kind of gives you an idea of where everything's at. Um, this is how our company hierarchy is. Some of them are different. Uh, some of them don't have area manager because they're smaller and they don't need someone just to drive around and, and check everything out. Their manager can do that. But ours is obviously a pretty large company. So we have the board of directors, and then we have the general manager, and the area, area manager who reports to the general manager. Uh, the department managers, which are, uh, you know, feed departments, fuel departments, uh, feed, fuel, um, seed, chemical, agronomy, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have the branch managers. And also the department managers, uh, we put our accounting department in there too. And I spent a half a day with each of those department managers, which, you know, I guess I learned a little bit, but it's kind of, for most of the time because they weren't in the middle of you know ordering things or anything like that they were just kind of telling us what they did um, I spent a full day with the area manager we got to go around and um, see probably eight of our locations we just uh, drove around and toured these locations and uh, our the area manager gave us this list to fill out he asked us for uh, what could be improved with this location? Uh, does this location need more bin capacity? Um, things like that. We had to fill that out. That was kind of interesting. Here are some of the things that our company offers. There's me loading some feed into a truck, and that is staged, by the way. I did that a lot, but that, that particular one was staged. Um, oh, we do grain storage and marketing, bulk dry and liquid fertilizer, and hydrous ammonia application of chemical feed and mineral, seed cleaning, certified, we have, uh, I think we have like five certified crop advisors in our company. Uh, we offer soil testing, and we offer retail hardware at most of our locations. These are some of our company relations uh, that we have, you know, we're involved with an LLC, or, you know, we, we're involved with them in some way. CHS, which is a Fortune 100 company. What do they say? I think they're like number 71 or something. 91. Uh, well, they, they had, they're 90s right now, but they had been higher than that. That's the uh, biggest cooperative, I think, in the nation. Uh, Land O'Lakes, which, you know, they for their butter and all that uh, milk, that kind of stuff. They have Winfield Solutions, which is their agronomy department. Uh, Cinex is part of CHS, Cinex Harvest States. Uh, that's where our fuel comes from. Uh, and EMA is our marketing alliance, equity marketing alliance in Enid. That's uh, just a big, uh, that's where our grain, whenever we buy it from the farmer, 
uh, Equity Marketing Alliance has it and they market it for us. And there's a lot of co-ops involved in that alliance. Uh, do you know how many there are? I know Perryton's involved with it. I've, there's a lot. There are at least one state. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, no, I don't think elevators so. involved with that. Uh, and that's a medium. Yeah. The typical harvest day started out with you know, <laughs> drinking coffee, which that was every day. That's, that's you know, a good 30 minutes in the morning, just waiting to do something. Drink the coffee and check the markets. And this picture is also staged, but I did that every day too. Those are actually harvesters, uh, custom harvesters that didn't really know what was going on, and they were kind of embarrassed to take that picture. So I guess he was just looking on with me. Uh, 8:30 to 11:30, uh, we usually open the leg, elevate or open elevator and warehouse doors, uh, start the legs and the fans in preparation for uh, the grain that was about to come. And you know, if we had time, we swept the elevator, which a lot of the time we didn't have time trucks, you know, sometimes they're rolling in at 10 o'clock from wheat cut the night before, or even earlier than that, and in the middle of harvest, it gets going pretty early in the day. From about 11.30 a.m. or sometimes sooner to about 11.30 p.m. or sometimes later, we dump trucks, which, you know, that was, I've, I've worked in an elevator two previous summers, so I was kind of used to it. Uh, you know, it's a dirty job. It's kind of hard work, you have to pay attention to what you're doing, you know, at the same time you're running the grain up the elevator and you got to pay attention to how your legs are running and, uh, you know, what what RPMs uh, they're, they're using and you got to make sure that it's at a certain, a certain uh, RPM range to, so you don't slug the leg, which is just getting it caught up and uh, not being able to run. Uh, after each uh, truck's dumped, we swept everything up and after that we waited on more trucks and this was all day. So. It was, it was kind of fun. You know, it gets kind of old, but uh, when you have guys that you like to work with, you know, you can, you know, crack jokes and talk to everybody all day. So it's really not that bad. And at the same, same time we were doing this, we have to load out trucks uh, because we were a short storage facility. We don't have as much uh, grain capacity as we take in. So uh, I think we have around 500 some thousand bushel capacity and we took in I think 730,000 so we were having to load out as we were taking trucks in and uh, at our location we are it is uh, planned to build two 200,000 bushel uh, grain bins in the near future so that will help out a lot. Mark where are you taking that grain? Where were we taking it? Yeah. Um, we were taking it to either ADM and Enid or uh, to Arc City that's usually where we go. I was just wondering if you take it to another branch. No, well, sometimes they do take them to another branch. That's usually the grain that's before. That we, if we still have grain in before harvest, we'll take it to our larger capacity facilities. I thought you would have taken it like to Puerto Catusa. Uh, we take it to ADM. Uh, hmm. they, they might take some over there later in the season, but uh, most of the trucks that I've loaded out in my three years of being at this elevator, it it's usually goes to Enid. Uh, there's the normal day, which, uh, you know, we still have the coffee time in the morning and talk to the old farmer time in the morning and see what's going on in the community. Uh, and perform maintenance on equipment and landscape, which landscape is just mostly mowing, so that takes quite a while. Uh, loaded feed and chemical for customers um, and made deliveries between company and locations. Uh, that was just, you know, if I had to go pick up some chemical or, you know, get some oil or some you know, some filters or anything from another branch that, that might have it, I had to go get that and bring it back or some feed. Because in our, in, our, uh, in our company, like we have one location that's strictly feed because they have a feed mill, so they're our feed department. Uh, another location holds all of our, you know, our oil for retail and all that kind of stuff. So we have to move around and go get that and bring it to our location for our customers, so. Uh, for my special project, which will be exactly like Sarah and Chad's, this is kind of the outline of what we did. We had to talk about our pre-harvest uh, maintenance and you know getting rid of our uh, grain from previous harvests. We had to talk about our harvest, our post-harvest, and our aeration after we have wear shorn grain. Our upgrades, which I told you we're getting ready to build two new facilities. Uh, you know some kind of problems that we might have had in our facility, like, uh, you know, bottle, bottlenecks, like trucks moving 
off the scale and loading out and dumping and all that kind of stuff, which we did have that at, a, at my location. Uh, maintenance and grain blending, which in our facility we didn't have to grain that much, or we didn't have to blend that much grain because uh, we get rid of it so fast because we are a short storage facility. So we mostly just get it into our loadout bin and get rid of it as soon as we can. <coughs> Here's some of the things that I learned during my 10 weeks at my location. Uh, I learned a little bit more about the structure of the cooperative. I learned some about patronage, which is the money that you give back to your members and shareholders after you get after the company gets you know, their, their profit back. Uh, I learned a lot about customer and employee relations with my general manager and my branch manager, and some of the manager's uh, strategies and his duties as well, which I was really surprised to learn that our general manager goes and picks up the mail every day and goes through the mail. I wouldn't have ever thought that he did that, but they kind of have a checks and balances system when it comes to that because they're often getting uh, checks in from customers so they have to, so he is the first one to receive that. He gives it to his secretary to check and he gets it back. So it was kind of interesting. Right? Would I recommend this internship to future uh, AGLE people that are looking for an internship? Um, here's some of the things that if, you know, if they're willing to do these things then I'd recommend them. If they're willing to work hard all summer, all day, uh, you know, someone that wants to be in a rural community for most of the summer and not have a lot to do. Or, uh, you know, someone that doesn't mind long hours, you know, you're going to face all of these things if you're going to have an internship with a, a local cooperative. That's just how it is. That's where they're located and that's how it's going to be. Um, I had enjoyed it. I mean, I knew what it was going to be all about because I had worked at a co-op previously. Uh, I'm glad that I got to work with the managers and all that kind of things, kind of stuff because I wasn't uh, able to do that before just being a summer laborer. These are some of the extracurricular activities. We got bored one day whenever it was getting toward the end of the harvest. We just, you know, shot some guns and some targets. <laughs> one of my my foreman at my uh, at my elevator, he's a gun collector, so he had he had you know 22 pistols. He had a Benelli. 12 gauge that we shot one day. I don't know. We had a lot of fun during our off time. Uh, me and the middle girl and the girl right there, this is my girlfriend, we've all worked at this co-op for three years, so we had a fun time together. And these guys down here, those are some of the local, or the older gentlemen that come in and just, you know, gossip and things that you see in a, in a rural community. And uh, this particular picture in the left corner, left down corner right here, the guy with the, on the far right, right there, it was actually his birthday, we were having a birthday party for him right there, I could fit the cake in, but it looks pretty excited. Yeah, yeah we, do the, we do that kind of stuff for everybody. One of our secretaries left, so we had a going away party for her. We have a pre-harvest party for everybody, we cook burgers and and all that kind of stuff, and it's, it's pretty fun. It's a really tight-knit, small town. And... Thank you. That's all I have today. That's that's everybody at my location. The guy on the far right over there is the branch manager. The lady not holding the sign in the middle is the secretary. That's my foreman right here that has all the guns. And there's us three hard work, hard working suckers up there. So that was the crew, and I had a good time working with them. So that's all I got. Any questions? You said like during the wheat harvest. I mean, I know that there's times where you get over 